Do you know who David French is? Well, <laughs> Debbie doesn't. She goes, we got something coming up. She goes, who's David French? I'm going to have to Google him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, you got a long way to go. My wife doesn't even know who you are. Well, anyway, who's David French? Turns out that this is a kind of a never Trumper, kind of a long standing, um, kind of a self righteous guy at the National Review magazine. And he's got an article about um, how the culture wars and the polarization in America. In fact, there's a rather telling uh, University of Virginia study recently that showed that. A majority of Trump voters, 52%, basically either agree or somewhat agree that, you know what, it's time to split the country. We're sick of the other side. We hate those people. Uh, we'd rather have our own America. And interestingly, 41%, a very significant minority of Biden voters, also agree. So that means, if you think about it, that there is there's kind of a majority in the country for the two sides going our own way. And David French is appalled, <laughs> this guy. And he thinks this is all a giant misunderstanding. The culture wars are much ado about nothing. In fact, he goes on to point, he says things like, <laughs> he says things like, um, while the two sides view each other as an existential threat, he, David French, has, has kind of rustled up some data that shows that both sides are missing the point. Apparently, only David French gets the point. Well, let's see what his point is. His point is that he says the fundamental reality of American politics is that voters hate or fear the opposing side in part because they have mistaken beliefs about their opponents. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. <Yeah. laughs> this guy is actually a public figure. <laughs> It sounds like somebody in an insane asylum. Uh, anyway, uh, French goes on to lament that American radicalism is now filtered down to the ranks of normal folks. And he thinks it's all based on misinformation. Misinformation, by the way, coming from people like me. I'm, na I'm named in the article. <laughs> And he quotes this for me as a self-evident absurdity. Uh, he says, I cannot understand this. Uh, and, my, and, and what I tweeted out was this. I wonder if history will view January 6th in retrospect as America's Tiananmen Square. Desperate protesters seeking to have their voices heard. Vicious government crackdown and prosecution. No dissent policy enforced across society via mass censorship and one-party media. So those are the three respects. I'm not saying, I'm not directly, no analogy um, is perfect. Obviously, more people were killed in Tiananmen Square. There were just one, maybe two. Ashley Babbitt, Roseanne Boylan killed in January 6th. But the, the, the way in which the incident was, um, in a sense, leveraged for a massive state crackdown, that's to me the real analogy. Anyway, for David French, this is like, preposterous. This is over the top. Uh, and it's over the top in part only because this is a guy who can't think outside the box. You know, he's he's sort of reflexively, you know, Tiananmen Square, oh, horrible, horrible. January 6th, oh, the Capitol Police rallied to the occasion. They saved democracy. So, you know, when you when you basically operate in this robotic mode, you you're you don't you're not elastic enough. You don't have the kind of intellectual malleability to say, you know, I never thought about it that way, but let me at least let me go with Dinesh and see if there's something to it. And if not, say in what respect the analogy is flawed. Now, the reason I think David French is fundamentally wrong is, is this, that the difference in American politics from, let's say, the 1980s to today uh, isn't just that the polarization has somehow gotten worse. The real question is, why has it gotten worse? And here's why. Because in the past, American politics uh, reflected an agreement on goals and a disagreement on means. So 30 years ago, if you were to sit down Republicans and Democrats and say to them basically this, here are our goals. We want an America to be prosperous and innovative uh, and the technological leader of the world. Um, both sides would go, yeah. Uh, we might disagree about the fact about how the pie should be split, but we agree. We want, we want to focus on making a really big pie. We want America to be strong. We want America to be confident. We want America to be an example to the world. Uh, we want America to um, um, uh, show the world how it's done. 
Uh, we want the American dream to be a kind of exemplar to other people. We love the social equality in America, even if there isn't economic equality, no American is better or worse than any other. And finally, we want to view our political opponents um, as misguided, but not inherently wicked. So I think most Americans in the 1980s would have agreed with all of this. The disagreement, as I say, was over means. And here the difference today is that there's a difference over goals. And so it doesn't matter if David French can show that on the infrastructure bill, there's areas of agreement about the need to build a road or a bridge. That totally misses the point. The point is now the Republicans want to go to Virginia or they want to go to one place and the Democrats want to go to San Francisco. When that's the case in politics, then every gain for one side is a loss for the other side. And an outright win for one side is a, is a disastrous defeat for the other side. The two sides don't want to live in the same America. They're pushing in opposite directions. Uh, and this is, I think, the kind of moral logic behind what the University of Virginia study is showing. And rather than sort of take it seriously, uh, one way you understand people is to try to see it from their point of view. But that's, David French doesn't do that. What he does, he, sits, he sort of sits on his, on a kind of Himalayan mound. He sits in the lotus position <laughs> and he basically surveys all the people down there and he goes, oh, these misguided people on the left and the right, they think Think they disagree, but from up here, it all looks the same to me. Of course, I can hardly see it. I don't see anything really down there, but it's kind of the same, isn't it? So, what were I... <laughs> again, again, uh, this is just intellectually, to my view, pathetic. It's an embarrassment. Uh, but for quite some time now, that embarrassment bears the initials DF.